Labor Law When Reviewer Part 1. General Principles. Applicable Laws. 1. The 1987 Constitution. The 1987 Constitution, Article 2, Section 18, declares as a state policy, the state affirms labor as a primary social economic force. It shall protect the rights of workers and promote their welfare. Accordingly, in the Article on Social Justice, the Constitution commands, the state shall afford protection to labor, local and overseas, organized and unorganized, and promote full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. Sec. 3, Article 13 1987 Constitution, Constitution enumerates the guaranteed basic rights of workers, namely, 1, to organize themselves, 2, to conduct collective bargaining or negotiation with management, 3, to engage in peaceful concerted activities, including to strike in accordance with law, 4, to enjoy security of tenure, 5, to work under humane conditions, 6, to receive a living wage and, 7, to participate in policy and decision-making processes affecting their rights and benefits as may be provided by law. 2. PD 442, as amended by RA 6715. Presidential Decree No. 442. A decree instituting a labor code, thereby revising and consolidating labor and social laws to afford protection to labor, promote employment and human resources development and ensure industrial peace based on social justice. May 1, 1974 was signed into law. November 1, 1974 Effectivity Date RA No. 6715 An Act to Extend Protection to Labor, Strengthen the Constitutional Rights of Workers to Self-Organization, Collective Bargaining and Peaceful Concerted Activities, Foster Industrial Peace and Harmony, Promote the Preferential Use of Voluntary Modes of Settling Labor Disputes, and Reorganize the National Labor Relations Commission, Amending for these purposes certain provisions of Presidential Decree No. 442, as amended, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, appropriating funds therefor, and for other purposes. RA 6715 Hera Velasa Law. Sen. Bla Sobel Father of Labor Code. A. Since Decisions of the Supreme Court, Article 8, NCC. Article 8. Judicial decisions applying or interpreting the laws or the Constitution shall form a part of the legal system of the Philippines. 1. Omnibus Rules and Regulations, as amended by DO 40 I 15, S.2015 Dole Department. Advisory No. 01, S. 2015, Renumbering the Labor Code. Further amending Department Order No. 40, Series of 2003. Amending the Implementing Rules and Regulations of Book V of the Labor Code of the Philippines, as amended. Three Fields of Labor Law 1. Labor Standards Labor Standards, as defined more specifically by jurisprudence, are the minimum requirements prescribed by existing laws, rules and regulations relating to wages, hours of work, cost of living allowance, and other monetary and welfare benefits, including occupational, safety, and health standards. Maternity Children's Hospital vs. Secretary of Labor, GR. Number 78909. 2. Labor Relations. Labor Relations Law, on the other hand, defines the status, rights and duties, and the institutional mechanisms that govern the individual and collective interactions, of employers, employees or their representatives. Azucena. 2010. 3. Social legislation. Social legislation as those laws that provide particular kinds of protection or benefits to society or segments thereof in furtherance of social justice. Azucena, 2010. 1. Concept of labor objective of labor labor in ITS technical sense. Labor, in ordinary signification is understood as physical toil although it does not necessarily exclude the application of skill, thus there is skilled and unskilled labor. Skill, by dictionary definition, is the familiar knowledge of any art or science, united with readiness and dexterity in execution or performance or in the application of the art or science to practical purposes.
work is broader than labor as work covers all forms of physical or mental exertion, or both combined, for the attainment of some object other than recreation or amusement per se. For this reason worker is broader than employee, as workers may refer to self-employed people and those working in the service and under the control of another, regardless of rank, title, or nature of work. A messenger, as well as a manager, is a worker. In fact, under Article 13 of the Labor Code, any member of the labor force, whether employed or unemployed, is a worker. Employee is a salaried person working for another who controls or supervises the means, manner or method of doing the work. Employment relationship is expounded in Book 3 of this work. Four Systems of Labor 1. Slavery The State or Condition of a Slave Slave a man who is by law deprived of his liberty for life, and becomes the property of another. Bouvier Law Dictionary. 2. Serfdom. The condition of a tenant farmer bound to a hereditary plot of land and to the will of a landlord, the state or fact of being a serf. Serf a member of a servile feudal class bound to the land and subject to the will of its own or. Merriam-Webster Dictionary. 3. Free Artisanship. Article 1713 of the Civil Code, by the contract for a piece of work the contractor binds himself to execute a piece of work for the employer, in consideration of a certain price or compensation. The contractor may either employ only his labor or skill, or also furnish the material. 4. Wage System. Republic Act No. 6727 or the Wage Rationalization Act equals the two-eared wage system consists of a fixed floor wage, or entry-level wage, for new entrants and low-skilled workers, and a flexible wage above the floor based on worker productivity and industry or enterprise performance, which may be negotiated between the employer and the workers. Bases for the Enactment of Labor Laws 1. Police Power C. R. 263. G. LCP. While social justice is the raison d'etre of labor laws, their basis or foundation is the police power of the state. It is the power of government to enact laws, within constitutional limits, to promote the order, safety, health, morals and general welfare of society, people versus. Vera Reyes, 67 Phil 190. 1. Social justice. Social justice, is neither communism, nor despotism nor atomism nor anarchy, but the humanization of laws and the equalization of social and economic forces by the state so that justice in its rational and objectively secular conception may at least be approximated. Galilang v. Williams, 1940. Social justice means the promotion of the welfare of all the people, the adoption by the government of measures calculated to ensure economic stability of all the component elements of society through the Maintenance of proper economic and social equilibrium in the interrelations of the members of the community, constitutionally, through the adoption of measures legally justifiable, or extra-constitutionally, through the exercise of powers underlying the existence of all governments, on the time-honored principle of salus populi state suprema lex. Azucena, 2010. Cases, Garcia v. Philippine Airlines, G.R. Number 164856 Fax, PAL filed administrative charge against its employees here and petitioners after they were allegedly caught in the act of sniffing Shabu when a team of company security personnel and law enforcers raided the PAL Technical Center's tool room section. PAL dismissed petitioners on October 9, 1995 for transgressing the PAL Code of Discipline. Labor Arbiter resolved the illegal dismissal case filed by petitioner in their favor thus ordering PAL to immediately comply with the reinstatement aspect of the decision. NLRC dismissed petitioner's complaint for lack of merit. Labor Arbiter issued a writ of execution respecting the reinstatement aspect and issued a notice of garnishment. Respondent thereupon moved to quash the writ and to lift the notice while petitioners moved to release the garnished amount. NLRC affirmed the validity of the writ and the notice issued by the labor arbiter but suspended and referred the action to the rehabilitation receiver for appropriate action. Issue 
whether petitioners may collect their wages during the period between the labor arbiter's order of reinstatement pending appeal and the NLRC decision overturning that of the labor arbiter. Held, yes, it was held that no refund if pending appeal and adverse judgment is rendered against the labor. Then, by and pursuant to the same power, police power, the state may authorize an immediate implementation, pending appeal, of a decision reinstating a dismissed or separated employee since that saving act is designed to stop, although temporarily since the appeal may be decided in favor of the appellant, a continuing threat or danger to the survival or even the life of the dismissed or separated employee and his family. The social justice principles of labor law outweigh or render inapplicable the civil law doctrine of unjust enrichment espoused by Justice Presbytero Velasco, Jr. in his separate opinion. The constitutional and statutory precepts portray the otherwise unjust situation as a condition affording full protection to labor. Even outside the theoretical trappings of the discussion and into the mundane realities of human experience. The refund doctrine easily demonstrates how a favorable decision by the labor arbiter could harm, more than help, a dismissed employee. The employee, to make both ends meet, would necessarily have to use up the salaries received during the pendency of the appeal, only to end up having to refund the sum in case of a final unfavorable decision. It is mirage of a stopgap leading the employee to a risky cliff of insolvency. Capital Medical Center vs. Maris GR. Number 155098. Fax, Capital Medical Center, Inc., hired Dr. Caesar Maris, one of its stockholders, as in charge of its industrial service unit. Dr. Maris performed dual functions of providing medical services to Capital's more than 500 employees and health workers as well as to employees and workers of companies having retainer contracts with it. Dr. Maris received from Capital's president and chairman of the board, Dr. Thelma Clemente, a notice advising him of the management's decision to close or abolish the issue and the consequent termination of his services as chief thereof, effective April 30, 1992. Dr. Maris filed complaint against Capital and Dr. Clemente for illegal dismissal and reinstatement with claims for back wages, moral and exemplary damages, plus attorney's fees. Labor arbiter held that the abolition of the SU was a valid and lawful exercise of management prerogatives and ordered to pay complainant all sums due him under the hospital retirement plan. National Labor Relations Commission modified the labor arbiter's decision. It held that in the exercise of capital's management prerogatives, and set aside the labor arbiter's directive for the payment of retirement benefits to Dr. Maris. Dr. Maris elevated the case to the Court of Appeals via petition for review hitch, in the interest of substantial justice, was treated as one for certiorari. Court of Appeals held that Capital failed to strictly comply with both procedural and substantive due process, a condition sine qua non for the validity of a case of termination, held that Dr. Maris was illegally dismissed. Issue whether or not Court of Appeals committed an error in not upholding petitioner's management prerogative to abolish the industrial service unit. Held, no work is a necessity that has economic significance deserving legal protection. The social justice and protection to labor provisions in the Constitution dictate so. Employers are also accorded rights and privileges to assure their self-determination and independence and reasonable return of capital. This mass of privileges comprises the so-called management prerogatives. Although they may be broad and unlimited in scope, the state has the right to determine whether an employer's privilege is exercised in a manner that complies with the legal requirements and does not offend the protected rights of labor. One of the rights accorded an employer is the right to close an establishment or undertaking. It would indeed be stretching the intent and spirit of the law if a court were to unjustly interfere in management's prerogative to close or cease its business operations just because said business operation or undertaking is not suffering from any loss. As long as the company's exercise of the same is in good faith to advance its interest and not for the purpose of defeating or circumventing the rights of employees under the law or a valid agreement, such exercise will be upheld. Clearly then, the right to close an establishment or undertaking may be justified on grounds other than business losses but it cannot be an unbridled prerogative to suit the whims of the employer.
The ultimate test of the validity of closure or cessation of establishment or undertaking is that it must be bona fide in character. And the burden of proving such falls upon the employer. In the case at bar, capital failed to sufficiently prove its good faith in closing the issue. Tire is on versus Philippine Edge Techno Service GR. Number 169,712 Facts, a motion for leave to file, a, second motion for reconsideration, with a second motion for reconsideration incorporated therein, where petitioning law. When would a Arizona seeks the reconsideration of the resolution of the Supreme Court? Said resolution denied for lack of merit petitioner's previous motion for reconsideration which sought the reversal of SC decision dated March 14, 2008 or, in the alternative, modification thereof by awarding her separation pay and retirement benefits under existing laws. SC subscribed to the factual findings of the National Labor Relations Commission, NLRC, and the Court of Appeals that Tyrazona, being the administrative manager of Philippine EDS Techno Service, Inc. Bet was a managerial employee who held a position of trust and confidence when she read a confidential letter addressed to pet officers, directors containing the legal opinion of the Council of Pet regarding her case. Issue, whether or not Arizona is entitled with separation pay. Held, no as a general rule, an employee who has been dismissed for any of the just causes enumerated under Article 282 of the Labor Code is not entitled to separation pay. In Sci vs. Better Paladin Bank Trust Company, SC declared that only unjustly, illegally, dismissed employees are entitled to retirement benefits and other privileges including reinstatement and back wages. The policy of social justice is not intended to countenance wrongdoing simply because it is committed by the underprivileged. At best it may mitigate the penalty but it certainly will not condone the offense. Compassion for the poor is an imperative of every humane society but only when the recipient is not a rascal claiming an undeserved privilege. Social justice cannot be permitted to be, a, refuge of scoundrels any more than can equity be an impediment to the punishment of the guilty. Those who invoke social justice may do so only if their hands are clean and their motives blameless and not simply because they happen to be poor. This great policy of our Constitution is not meant for the protection of those who have proved they are not worthy of it, like the workers who have tainted the cause of labor with the blemishes of their own character. Fuentes, et dot al. Versus. NLRC, et dot al. 226 SCRA 24. Facts, petitioners were regular employees of private respondent Agus and Plantations, Inc which was engaged in the operation of a palm tree plantation in Trento, Agus and del Sur, since September 1982. Claiming that it was suffering business losses which resulted in the decision of the head office in Singapore to undertake retrenchment measures, private respondents sent notices of termination to petitioners in the Department of Labor and Employment, Dole. On October 31, 1990 petitioners filed with the Dole office in Cagayan de Oro City a complaint for illegal dismissal with prayer for reinstatement, back wages and damages against private respondent Oguz and Plantation, Inc., and O Chang Chi Kong. In their answer respondents denied the allegations of petitioners and contended that upon receipt of instructions from the head office in Singapore to implement retrenchment. Private respondents conducted grievance conferences or meetings with petitioners' representative labor organization, the Association of Trade Unions through its national president Jorge Aliga Herbs, its local president and its board of directors. Private respondents also contended that the 30-day notices of termination were duly sent to petitioners. Labor arbiter rendered a decision in favor of petitioners ordering private respondents to pay the former separation pay equivalent to 15 days pay for every year of service plus salary differentials and attorney's fees. National Labor Relations Commission, the decision of the labor arbiter was reversed. Issue, whether or not there were valid retrenchment with respect to the herein petitioners. Held. No Article 283 of the Labor Code provides that closure of establishment and reduction of personnel. A the employer may also terminate the employment of any employee due to the installation of labor-saving devices, redundancy, 
retrenchment to prevent losses or the closing or cessation of operation of the establishment or undertaking unless the closing is for the purpose of circumventing the provisions of the title, by serving a written notice on the workers in the Ministry of Labor and Employment at least one month before the intended date thereof. In case of termination due to the installation of labor-saving devices or redundancy, the worker affected thereby shall be entitled to a separation pay equivalent to at least his one-month pay or to at least one-month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher. In case of retrenchment to prevent losses and in case of closure or cessation of operations of establishment or undertaking not due to serious business losses or financial reverses, the separation pay shall be equivalent to one month pay or at least one half month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher. A fraction of at least six months shall be considered one whole year. Under Article 283 therefore retrenchment may be valid only when the following requisites are met, a, it is to prevent losses, b, written notices were served on the workers and the Department of Labor and Employment, dole, at least one, one, month before the effective date of retrenchment and, c, separation pay is paid to the affected workers. Constitutional and Statutory Rights of Workers 1. Right to property and due process 2. Right to organize 3. Conduct collective bargaining and negotiation with the management 4. Engage in peaceful concerted activities 5. Enjoy security of tenure 6. Work under humane conditions 7. Receive a living wage definition 8. Right to a just share in the fruits of the production 9. Participate in policy and decision-making processes. C. Doctrine of Co-Determination. Case, Philippine Airlines, Inc. vs. NLRC, 225 SCRA 301. J. Specific Rights of Workers. Labor Standards A. Sense Right to Work Under Humane Conditions that is hours of work, a sense right to holiday pay, service incentive leaves and service charges a sense right to the minimum wage a sense right against discrimination a sense right to health, safety, and social welfare benefits. Labor relations a sense right to form a union. A sense right to engage in peaceful and concerted activities. A sense right to security of tenure. A sense right to collective bargaining and administration of agreement. A sense right against illegal dismissal. Aspects of Labor Standards 1. Meliorative Labor Standards Melior, better the better, as in Meliores, the better thing or chattel. Meliorations minus 1. Scott's Law. Improvements other than repairs made to an estate by tenant or life renter. The cost of meliorations is not recoverable from the landlord or fire. 2. Lasting Improvements. Block's Law Dictionary. Meliorative labor standards say intended to expand the flow of income or benefits to the workingmen that are required for a decent living. For example overtime pay, premium pay. 2. Protective labor standards. Protective labor standards say intended to protect harsh and oppressive conditions of work that are inimical to health, safety and well-being of the workers. For example protect the health safety and well-being of the workers, prescribed hours of work. Sources of Labor Standards 1. Statute 2. Administrative Orders 3. Employment Contracts 4. Company Policies and Practices 5. Compulsory or Voluntary Arbitration 6. Collective Bargaining Agreements or CBA a collective bargaining agreement or CBA refers to the negotiated contract between a legitimate labor organization and the employer concerning wages, hours of work and all other terms and conditions of employment in a bargaining unit. As in all contracts, the parties in a CBA may establish such stipulations, clauses, terms and conditions as they may deem convenient provided these are not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order or public policy. Thus, where the CBA is clear and unambiguous, it becomes the law between the parties and compliance therewith is mandated by the express policy of the law. Goya Inc. vs. Goya Inc. Employees Union FFWGR. 170054